this is what a brake shutter looks like guys um, when you're traveling at maybe a hundred and then you step on the brake watch the steering wheel move from side to side so I'm gonna step on the brake right now you see that shutter so I'm gonna try to fix that I'm gonna show you guys how okay so first I'm gonna address this issue of the brake shutter so you guys can see there's a little bit of dark spot on the rotor so there's some high spots in here I'm gonna turn it on the brake light so I gotta remove the caliper and to do that just remove this two 18 millimeter bolts that's it that one and that one so just like that and then just hang the caliper so now remove the Torx which is a T30 so right there I have it on the brake plate So that's what it looks like right now. I'll show you guys once it's finished turning. On this side, I'm gonna try to clean this out a little bit, put a little bit of antithesis so it's easier to remove the brake disc slash rotor next time. So I removed this covers, this cover, three clips, and as you guys can see, there's coolant here, and it's running down from the water pump, which is right here. So, first thing, first thing I want to do is remove this serpentine belt. So, this is the tensioner. And it's a half inch it looks like so I just want to pull this tensioner back this way backwards and then it'll give me slack to remove this belt but first draw out the belt routing so it's easier to put back once I'm done replacing the water pump just like that so now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the belt. So this is what I mean. I got a little breaker bar right here, the half inch. And if I pull back, as you guys can see. So I'm gonna need two hands, but just pull this back and slip the belt off. So right there, the belt is out. I'm gonna be if you're not gonna replace the belt then you can just let it hang but i will be replacing this belt also so i'm just gonna go ahead and remove it all the way out just like that Oh, so note guys it would have been a lot easier for me if I had loosened these four 10 millimeter bolts there before I remove the belt but I can still loosen them I just gotta hold up hold the pry bar in the back side and loosen this with a 10 mil but if you guys well I made that mistake so now you guys will know better Loosen this 10 mils, 4 10 mils first before you remove that serpentine belt. 
older as you guys can see it's not cutting good right now it's not removing all the areas that it's warped so I'm gonna give it one fine cap cut after this and it should look a lot better than this do forget just use a pry bar and hold one of the 10 mil bolt against the pry bar and then at the other with your other hand loosen it with a 10 mil ratcheting wrench and you should be able to loosen it they're not really tight and the laminal guys I need to go up in the up in the engine area up top and I gotta remove the engine mount because this pulley is now loose but as you guys can see it's not clearing the upper part of the engine mount so I gotta go ahead and do that right here guys I'm gonna go ahead and remove this airbox assembly air back cleaner assembly there's two 10 mils right here on this one side I gotta loosen this bellows bellow out there's one 8 mil right there and this and I gotta unhook this connector it's fairly easy just lift the stub up and push down pull out same on this side you just press that down Press that down and pull out. There you go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the 210 mil and loosen this 8, eight mil. There it is, guys. Air assembly is out. So right there. Now I have all this room. So what I need to remove is this bracket. So I gotta remove this engine mount regardless. So in the meantime, I'm gonna put a little bit of a support underneath in case it, the engine drops quite a bit but it shouldn't drop that much because there's also another couple of engine mounts on the other side. So I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. That guys, just get a big block of wood. And then lower the engine to where it's just sitting. Or lower the whole car to where it's just sitting and then... And then remove the engine mount. This Roller is nice and clean. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a buff with a sandpaper like this on both sides. And then I'm gonna throw it the other one in here. The left side. So these two nuts on this side is 18s. And then these three are 15. After you remove all the bolts and the two nuts, 315s and 218s, this just lifts up. The engine mounts, this just lifts up. Just sit in there. So now, I need to remove this bracket. Uh, I believe this looks like 18s. So there's a total of three. There was one here, there was one over here, and there's the last one over here. So there it is guys. There is the water pump. So now you can just remove this pulley. And from here, 
can access the water pump, which is actually not bad. So Adam, you also have another problem here, but it's not that big of a deal. It's a little bit of sweating on this pipe area. So pretty much, I don't have the seal for that because I did not see it was leaking. So I think we're just gonna have to leave that for now and just deal with this water pump issue right here. But I'll see what I can do. I'm gonna see if I can find a seal there. What I'm gonna do right off the bat is open up this water pump to see if they are identical. Uh, it looks like it's the same so that's good so according to that there's a total of one two three four five five bolts unless I can't see one on the bottom I'll confirm with that I'll I'll, con bleh. I'll co confirm as soon as I remove that so there's a total of six guys okay so after removing the six bolts and they are all the same length so that makes it a lot easier should just come off as I, I pry this off right there and yes I have a bucket although it's not catching all of it because <laughs> that wood is on the way but yeah it is what it is <laughs> so that's it the water pump is out guys so I'm gonna see what I can do on this because I don't have the seal but I might just take it out and then maybe apply a little bit of silicone in there and let it settle. But yeah, remove this gasket. And I'm gonna clean that surface a little bit. So there it is, there's the water pump, guys. So here's one thing, this gasket is better than the one that I got. So I might just reuse this gasket because I don't really like this paper one. Uh, um, yeah. So anyways, I'm gonna see what I can do with this first. Um, stay tuned. So in or order to access part of this piping, I gotta remove this cover, which is quite simple. This is a 10 mil right here. Okay, so in order to remove this pipe right here, just press down the stab and pull this back. Like that. There's probably gonna be some coolant up in here too, but it should be okay. So that's already loose, so when I pull this back, it should just come off. So again, just press this tab and pull it back. And then there's two 10 mils. There's one and two. And it should come loose. There's two, the two 10 volts. There's a black rubber sleeve, so don't lose it. So in theory, this should just 
pull up right there okay so yeah look at that there is no the o-ring that's supposed to be here is all flat so I'm gonna see if I could find something to replace that and then add some silicone into it so that's it guys I'm just gonna clean obviously clean this and then clean this so I'm gonna clean that surface and clean that surface there's actually two gaskets there's one in the bottom too and this one is not that bad it's not terrible shape Okay, so what I'm using guys is just an angle die grinder with a rollo disc on the end and then just slowly you know, buff the mating surface. Alright, so it can't quite fit my angle die grinder in here so sandpaper also works guys, sandpaper. So I think I was able to find the right o-ring guys, I took it out as you guys can see. So look at this, look so flat and look it's deteriorating. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for this one and just add a little bit of silicone on top of it just to make sure that it's not gonna leak. I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a clean up as well before I put that o-ring in and then it should be ready to go in there I also use the new seal might as well but I used a little bit of a wetter adhesive to hold it in place and then I might add a little bit of a former gasket on the back side for extra sealing so I'm just gonna let that sit and dry up a little bit more and prep the other stuff okay so it's in there I mean, you guys can see it's actually fits pretty good but for extra protection I'll put a little bit of this silicone just around just around the area here so when I bolt it on it'll sit nicely over there settle down and then it should be leak free so I added a little bead of silicone just around the seal the new seal and I also added a little bit of a former gasket Just where this seal is gonna sit. I mean, it looks fairly good, but but like I said, I don't want to risk it leaking either. So you know, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna put it there now, bolt it in, and let it settle down. like how um, that silicone is sitting nicely like that so it means I got a good bead in there should be really good seal right now so next I'm gonna work on is the water pump so again I'm gonna put a little bit of former gasket around here too clean surface now and bolt the water pump and let it settle there. Just a good bead of the former gasket. Put it right on the gasket. Now I'm gonna bolt it into the car. So basically, I already pre-lined it earlier, so I think it's gonna go 
like this. Okay, all the bolts are in place. Now I'm gonna snug it down, crisscross. Crisscross it, snug it down. You know what I mean. Look right here, go down here, up here, down there, up here, down there. <laughs> Right now, I'm gonna snug them by hand. I don't really have the spec, guys. So, if you want to do it in specs, then look it up. Don't forget to just push it back, then it'll snap into place. Okay, so now and put this pulley back on so if anything guys you could actually do everything from up top this is my first time doing it so if you didn't have to remove the wheel if you don't want to remove the wheel I had to because I had to machine the rotor you could omit this part on the bottom part and just start right up the top where you remove the air cleaner assembly and then removing the engine mount this should be this should work for you you could actually do the water pump from up top no problem and also put the belt back no problem because then you can just get the tensioner from this side yeah so there you go guys saved you another step so putting the belt back on the tricky part here guys might be so this part where the tensioner is at it's a little tight on the back side but you want to be able to slide it from the back side flip it up so it faces like that like the rib part is facing upwards so now she guess again Look at your diagram and then from the water pump, it's supposed to go like that to the power steering. Then around the tensioner. So like that and then pull this down. This one should go to the crank. This one to the alternator and down here. So I'm gonna need two hands for this now. So you guys wanna know some leverage tricks? So I have an 18 millimeter socket here with a 3/8. Just put it over my little breaker bar. <clears throat> now it's a lot easier for me to push this back. That's if you can't fit a bigger pry bar, which this one is a little tight. Pry bar, I meant breaker bar, sorry. <laughs> the belt is in. So now that that's in, I also want to give this snug. I already hit it with a air, my electric ratchet, so I know they are pretty tight. <laughs> Should be good. Okay, now I gotta put the engine mount back on. Well, first, this bracket, the engine mount, then the air box. Okay. Bracket is in, engine mount is in. 
Now the air box. Box is in. So the trick here guys is to line up the back, the back part, the ducking and this rubber grommet to where it's supposed to be. So try to line that up first on the back side and then everything else should fall into place in here. So the hole should line up here and this should just slide right in and now we just gotta tighten that. Put the two 10 mils up here. So we'll tighten the two 10 mils. Plug the connector back in. This one, put the remove the cap, put the cover back, line up those that tab and that one tab with that, that, and then it should be good. So I'll show you guys on the back side. Yeah, right there. So try to line them up to that and to that. First thing I want to do is remove the cotter pin and the bolt or the nut, the castle nut. So yeah, I'm going to do that first and then I'm going to try to remove the rivet. I'll show you guys how to do it after. The hardest part of the job is removing this cotter pin but thank god it came loose. I'm quite happy about that. So, cotter pin is out. Throw that away. Just gotta loosen that nut off. And I should be able to slide the new one back in there. I'll show you how to do that too. So, this way, I don't have to remove the axle. Save some step. An 18 millimeter wrench. And just place it like that. And turn it. And yeah, there you go, came loose. So now it's just a matter of getting this loose. Right. So yeah, I know you won't be able to remove that all the way out, but once you pop this ball joint down, should lower and you should be able to take the nut off so now I want to take a big pry bar I'm gonna wedge it in between right there and pry it out but as you guys can see it's not budging because I want to release so I'm gonna grab a hammer grab a hammer and smack it in this area while I'm prying so it should release the ball joint stubborn one guys so I have I've supported this with a little jack to raise it up a bit so the weights off it and I'm using a pickle fork it doesn't matter if I destroy the boot because I'm replacing it anyways so yeah it is the ball can finally released. Okay. Now I'm gonna pry that all the way down. Then I'm gonna remove the rivets and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so don't forget to wear safety goggles and an earring protection for this. I'll show you why. So right there. I've got an air hammer so what you want to do is place it like that flat and just blast away like that but I'm gonna need two hands for this so yeah that's what you gotta do for all three okay so that's what it looks like now uh, there's still a little bit of something here that's not releasing so stick this diamond cut you know bit okay 
Okay, so after that guys, so um, it's just a matter of taking your hammer and just you know hit it till it comes off. Alright. So there you go. Now you wanna hit this obviously downwards. It's kinda of rusty, hopefully it'll just pop there. If it doesn't pop out, uh, maybe apply a little bit of heat and it should take care of it. But I'm gonna try hammering it down first, see what happens. Okay, gotta bring out the heat. So, you see it up like right here. Just get rid of all those rust build up. It should free it up and then give it a smack of the ha one hammer. One hammer. <laughs> You best smack on it with a hammer and uh, it should free up. So just like that. I'm gonna try that. So I'm gonna use the air hammer again with this adapter on it this time and get right on top of this. And see if that will just blast off. Okay hey guys, it's not budging the way it is right now, so plan B. I'm gonna take out the whole arm and take it out on the vise. Pull this out on the vise. So this was a 21. Uh, I believe this is gonna be a 15. So two bolts. 215 there and 121 right here. Alright. Okay, so we got it in the vise. Now I can give it a really good hammering. Okay guys, so this was really stubborn so I had to... Now I can hit it through. For some reason, the other side just didn't want to come out the other way, so... It is what it is. It's finally back in place, now I just gotta tighten this 21 and the 15 millimeter bolts here put this ball joint on and then we're on our way <laughs> this took me longer than supposed to be those those uh, rivets were just seasoned there anyways um, keep you guys posted so the ball joint should come with all this kit the castle nut the cotter pin the nipple for your grease fitting and then the three bolts so I'm gonna go right ahead and put it in the car and then show you what it's gonna look like. So it should look like that. So these nuts already comes with a lock washer so all you gotta do is tighten it. So it's a 17 so put a wrench up top and then hit it with a gun on the bottom. And then guys, um, now I just gotta tighten this Castle nut, snug it down, and put the cutter pin through. Then the grease spitting, grease spitting, then add some grease and call it a day. Grease spitting is in, and I already greased it all up. So that's it, that concludes that. Now I gotta put the brakes and the tires back on put some coolant in here and I also gotta do this front diff which is right here so there's the drain, there's the fill and same thing with, with this rear diff here's the fill and here's the drain So I give it a little bit of a clean and then I put some anti-seize on the back of this or the front of this hub. So next time when I pull the rotor out it won't be sticky. It'll just come right off. So anyways, after I put the rotor back on, I'm just gonna put the eight, 18 millimeter two bolts on the back of this, this caliper and should be good. I'll just show you guys when I drain the, the front and the rear diff. Okay, so right here I have a HW10 Allen key. Then just ratchet. 
So you want to loosen the fill first, fill flood. Because if it's that cease and you've drained it, you can't put fresh fluid in there. So you're kind of screwed. So first things first, you got to break or crack the fill open first before you start draining. Just so you know you can put fluid back. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the front diff. Just right here. Okay. Okay, so you see how it's dripping a little bit right now when I remove the fill plug? So that's what I want it also when it's full. It's usually gonna do that so right there that's perfect then I will just put the cap back on but first things first let's drain it oh there you go it's a little dark some silvery stuff and you see here a little bit of silver stuff right here it's a magnetic thing here, right? Magnetic plug. And it caught a bunch of the... Here, let's put it in this thing. You can see what I mean. See all that silvery stuff right there? So yeah, it's pretty dirty. We're using 75W90 synthetic. So... A little machine here. Battery's hooked up already, so this thing is gonna go on the bottle. You just press this on. Oh shit! <laughs> and then it just does that. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Didn't realize it was down here, but yeah, that's how I'm gonna fill it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna give a little wipe down right here in the bottom area and then put the plug back in and fill this back up. Also clean the magnetic drain plug. Alright, I'm gonna snug this down and fill it up. So while I'm gonna fill the rear, might as well drain the front. So by the time I'm done on the back, I can move into the front right away. This one takes the same fluid by the way, 75W90 synthetic. Uh, so there you go. It's also a little dirty and look, there's also something in the magnetic plug. Same thing as the rear. You guys can see right there some silvery stuff so I'm gonna give that a good clean also so and this rear I guess is full too doesn't take that much but yeah I'm filling the front it's a little bit more dripping now so that's full just let it drip a little bit more then we'll put the cap, cap back on last but not least I'll be replacing this blend and blend air door actuator right here it's a little noisy so in order to do that I'm just gonna have to move this stuff out of the way Remove the socket and then it's um I believe this that might be a seven or an eight. So yeah. Get this harness out of the way. I'm gonna pull this socket off and then remove that. So this was actually a quarter guys. 
of a band the butt. So yeah. The bolts are a quarter. Three of them. Okay, so the new one is in. So when you put it on, it only goes in one way. There's a flat spot right here. So yeah. So hopefully that stick takes care of that noise problem. So now just gotta put the glove glove box glove box <laughs> back. Alright. Guys, I'm gonna road test now on this 2011 GMC terrain 3 liter. So, seems to be driving fairly nice now. No brake shutter. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Um, thank you again for tuning into my channel. Please continue to like, share, subscribe. Guys, let me show you guys quickly what this GMC terrain looks like. So that's what it looks like guys pretty nice looking suv shout out to adam and janine so anyways um i'm gonna end my vlog here so once again thank you guys for tuning into my channel please continue to like share and subscribe Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Yeah.